other images from Darcy Padilla's award-winning photo essay, The Julie Project. Julie was raised by an alcoholic mother. She ran away from home at 14. She became addicted to drugs at 15. At 18, or at 19 rather, she contracted HIV. She had six children with three different men, five of whom were taken away from her and given up for adoption. She was arrested for kidnapping her newborn from Child Protective Services, and she died of AIDS at 36. We have a lot of Julies in New Mexico. Photographer Darcy Padilla followed Julie over 18 years of her life, documenting her extreme poverty and her addiction and struggle with addiction. In New Mexico, we have a huge problem with heroin and opioid addiction. We have twice the rate of deaths from drug overdose from the national average, and the epidemic is largely centered on young people. 5% of New Mexican high schoolers have tried heroin. 10% of high schoolers questioned in Santa Fe said over the previous 30 days they had either used heroin or narcotic painkiller pills. And our teenagers in New Mexico experiment with heroin at twice the rate of any other teenagers in the country. The epidemic is largely centered on young people, and many of those young people are women, and many of those women get pregnant. And many, uh, many other states have chosen to deal with the problem of drug use and, cr and pregnancy by criminalizing it. This is Mallory Loyola. She was, one of the, she was the first woman convicted under a Tennessee law that makes any drug use in pregnancy a felony. 38 states have feticide laws, which means if you're a woman and you get pregnant and you have a miscarriage and you're considered to be at fault, you can be convicted of murder. 18 states have laws, 14 states rather, have laws saying that any drug use in pregnancy is considered child abuse. At La Familia Medical Center in Santa Fe, we were seeing two or three women delivering at the hospital uh, drug-addicted babies, drug-dependent babies every month over a year ago. The women come in often with no prenatal care. They have uh, maybe tried to get access to drug treatment and not been able to access it. Um, and even if they did want to access drug treatment, they face the risk of losing their children or going to jail. And when they deliver their babies, their babies are born dependent on narcotics. So they have to spend weeks or even months in the hospital slowly and painfully withdrawing. It's heartbreaking to watch. And at La Familia Medical Center in Santa Fe, where I'm the medical director, we decided there must be a better way. This is Candace. She's at the baptism of her first child. Candace was one of the first women to enter our drug uh, treatment program for pregnant women. It's really powerful to watch these women who come in so desperate for help and transform their lives. It's not a linear path. They stumble and fall as we all do. But we meet them where they are and help them overcome the challenges. We provide them with social support and medically assisted treatment with a drug called Suboxone. Suboxone is a medication which can prevent withdrawal symptoms and satisfy cravings without causing a high. And it's not harmful to the fetus or the baby. We have about 10 years of studies now from the US and Europe which show this. And best of all, when babies are born to women who are using Suboxone in pregnancy to treat their addiction, they don't have those terrible withdrawal symptoms. So far in Santa Fe, over the last year that we've had this program at La Familia, we've delivered 31 healthy babies, like Candace's baby here, and very few of them have any, any withdrawal symptoms at all. The average length of stay is in the hospital is just five days after delivery. This is Aisha at the uh, birthday party of her first child, her daughter. We provide women with uh, social support with also behavioral health treatment and behavioral health counseling and counseling for their addiction. They get childbirth and parenting classes and other help to connect with the resources that they need. 
And best of all, over the last year, we've seen very few women delivering drug-dependent women at the hospital, drug-dependent babies at the hospital in Santa Fe. Almost all of the women have taken advantage of this path out of addiction that we've offered them. I've had the privilege to care for a lot of these women over the last year, and it's really easy to see their motivation for getting clean and staying sober when you see them with their children and families. There's still so much that stands in our way. Our attitudes about addiction, about motherhood, about punishment. But when you see these two stories side by side, you know that there is a better way. Aisha and Candace's stories could have easily turned out like Julie's if it weren't for their determination and also the fact that there was a hand, a helping hand available to them. Their stories don't have to end with HIV or overdose or incarceration or foster care. Their stories can have a different ending. Their stories can end with healthy families and strong communities. Thanks.